one third of it. I know. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call the uh, August 25th Board of Directors meeting for the Costa Mesa Sanitary District. Um, you all please rise and join with me in saluting our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, would you give us some words of wisdom this evening? Yeah. Um, dear God, um, help us do uh, proper deliberations on uh, all the very important matters in front of us. And um, send a special prayer for the angels. Mm -hmm. And Jim Warner, and oh, the former yeah, directors. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's up with Jim Warner? Passed away. Passed away. Uh, no, you're kidding. Yeah. 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 Okay, got a stroke. Madam Clerk, do you want to call, please? Director Janice Ferriman. Present. Assistant Secretary Arlene Schaefer. Here. Secretary Robert Rudin. Here. Vice President Arthur Perry is excused from this meeting. I'm President Michael Schaefer. Here. Thank you. Ceremonial matters and presentations. We're not going to wish Sean Connery a happy birthday today. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. 86 years old today. Yeah. James Bond turned 86. Yeah. Yeah. 0010. Right. <laughs> yeah. Any late communications? Uh, no, Mr. President. Thank you. And we'll move to uh, public comments. Anyone wishing to speak? I have a card, so we'll move to the consent calendar. We have a request uh, to pull item number two, so we'll pull item number two. Anything else on the consent calendar to pull? Move the consent calendar, omitting item number two. Second. Motion a second. We'll call for the question. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. That motion carries four to, nine, four to zero with one absent. Item two, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. We had a minor clarification on the report out from closed session, and that has been changed and is included in the minutes before you. Thank you. Any questions on that? I'll move the remainder. Second. Motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed unanimous with one absent. Uh, no public hearings this evening, so Scott will go right to the report. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so, uh, this item is regarding uh, project number 317, which is the President Pump Station Enforcement and Rehabilitation. Uh, as you know, um, District Engineer Rob Hamers gave a proposal to the board uh, of what it would take to rehabilitate the five pump stations that were once planned for abandonment. Um, and we came up with an estimate cost of about $6 million. The board um, directed staff that before they make any decisions on rehabilitating those, those stations, that they want to, they want, um, OCSD to officially um, cancel the project, um, the Costa Mesa truck project, uh, and they also directed me to meet with their general manager to see if we can get some reimbursements for uh, costs that have incurred. Uh, so um, I did meet with uh, Jim Hilberg at the um, Orange County Sanitation General Manager. Uh, we had some good meetings, and uh, as a result, uh, they placed on their board agenda last night uh, an item uh, that would recommend um, canceling their project, their Southwest Costa Mesa trunk project, and then they also authorized payment to uh, CMSB for $192,000. And that $192,000 was for mostly engineering and professional services costs that we incurred in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. I know we were also seeking to get some money for the pipe that we placed that, um, over there by Pleasant Park uh, in the main. But in their staff report, uh, they did not agree with that because one, there was no agreement between us and, and the agency, and they also said it was with the um, County Sanitation District Number Six. So, um, so with that, um, my my recommendation is now that that the project is officially closed. We did receive reimbursements from from OCSD. My recommendation is that we we did, or they're recommending. No, they they approved it last night. We approved. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. A tremendous result. Yeah, they approved it. <coughs> tremendous result. Yeah. So, um, so my recommendation is, is to proceed with President mm -hmm. Pump Station first of all the five stations. We did meet with um, the mate, mate, uh, wastewater crew, and we said, of those five stations, which one do you think is a priority? They all said President, and they said do the force name first, followed by the Pump Station. And 
so our recommendation is to um, appropriate the $192,000 that was approved by the OCSD last night, along with transferring $1,467,000 from Project 101 to Project 317, which is the, pre which is the President's um, Pump Station Force and Rehab Project. And then later, uh, and then directs that to request an additional appropriation of $1.5 million uh, at the time the construction contract is submitted for approval to the board. Uh, at this time, if you approve these approved staff recommendations, we can at least get the designs going at, at that point. What's the total budget for, for that president? Uh, 3.2 million. If I may, to the agenda report does show the recommendation is 3.2. That's what staff was originally asking. But finance was asked to appropriate what we've already budgeted in 101 and the 192. And then I'm we'll be coming back to the board in a month or two with the carryovers from the prior year. So I'd like to start, you know, like I'd like to shift that money there. And then when you actually have a solid cost on the contract, then approve the remaining budget. Yeah. So kind of just. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Other questions for staff then? Move for approval of this project as presented by our manager. Second. Yeah. Okay. Motion second. Further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 to 0 with one absent. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Did you see Yeah. That's just the end. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's just from. Um, yeah. well, well, can I ask one question? Absolutely. Yeah. Rob, do you, do you have a schedule? Um, no. Uh, we are. I haven't got there yet. So now you have, now, now that there's a no, you can. Right, we're, we're winding up a few other projects right now. We're uh, almost, we're at the bid. We actually have bid opening uh, next week on one project. And then we have one more to go at the bid. And then everything will be done except for this project. So just trying to keep things in order. And the first, I forget, is the first main a replacement for lining? We're, we're trying to, uh, that's a very good question, as much as we'd like to line it, yeah. if you line it, you have to bypass the line right. while you install the line. That's mile. Right. And it, it is over half mile long. One policy that we thrown around at staff level is a dual force main policy that well, okay. OCSD has. And if you build a new force main, you can build it without having to bypass until the very end when you tie in both ends. And if you build a new force main, then you can come back at your leisure without being under the gun to bypass then run a camera and the electronic inspection and then decide whether you want to line it or it's worth saving mm -hmm. and making it into a, 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 a true parallel or secondary line. Okay. So that's kind of our attitude <coughs> going on. The question? Yes, sir. One, um, do you think maybe at our study session next time would you be able to kind of give a presentation of how you're going to be doing all this? Sure. Yeah. Uh, actually, if it would be possible, could be, uh, let's see, we're talking about, uh, okay, next study session? Sure. Next session or the other? Is that enough time? Actually, maybe not. Yeah. How about the following? Okay, okay, okay. yeah, because I'm not trying right. to push it. I okay, so the next one's September, so October? Good. October study session. Great. Okay. We can get some nice pictures of everything. Good. Great. Great. Thank you. I'm 12 minutes of community outreach service. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. President. So the last time we, we did a community survey was in, 2000, it was in 2012 when we uh, surveyed uh, 1,000 uh, residents and we hired a consultant to do that work. Uh, we That survey in 2012 was really just geared on getting feedback on the fall waste division. Uh, Recommended recommendation now is to really do it all inclusive of the entire organization. And so back in November 2015, uh, staff um, presented to you um, uh, talking about the, the study and uh, what we need to do. And the board
board decided that um, we wanted to wait for further implementation of the organic recycling program because we thought there would be some, some um, key questions. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Sounds a like a, a lot like the U.S. East yeah. stomp. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. No <laughs> uh, so we, um, the board decided to, because we wanted to uh, further implement the organic recycling program, we thought there was um, some uh, warranted questions we wanted to ask the residents about how they feel about the program. So we, we, uh, the board felt uh, a survey in the fall would be more appropriate. Uh, so tonight what I'm recommending is just to give us the green light to solicit bids. Uh, we will go out and solicit bids and then once we award a contract and the contract, uh, once we award a consultant, the consultant's on board, we'll schedule a special meeting and then, then we can talk about the type of questions you want to ask. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't have that dialogue. You know, get some public comments and, on what kind of questions you want to ask. So. What kind of time frame are we looking at here? Yeah. Well, if you give me the green light today, we can start, we can start working on the RP, get down in a couple of weeks. Um, uh, I'm looking possibly in October we can have a special meeting and then um, you know, all, all really the, the, the study probably won't occur, occur to after the elections. And they might be able to, if, if your intention is to get it done before the election, we can try that. But everything considered, I think before the election, if possible, would okay. be a good idea. Okay, that's what, that's what I'm hearing. We can get the, see what the results before the election. Okay. I, well, maybe maybe the universe of uh, respondents don't have to be quite as big. That's a thousand true. is That's a true. lot. That's true. We can definitely cut it down. Um, you know, uh, I think the, the last time our consultant said, you know, um, five hundred, really three hundred fifty would have probably been yeah. fine. Um, but you know, we wanted a thousand. We always said a thousand because we can, you know, how can we refute the, the results of the survey when you have, yeah. you have a thousand residents? But we can do five hundred seven fifty. We can get a couple of cost pulses. See what it, what it was like. Mm -hmm. If it would expedite uh, the process, I think so. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, no, no problem. We, we, we did budget $30,000 for this, so it's in the budget. Okay, okay so my, my understanding is to get, get, yeah, get, get, get the results before the, the election. So, okay, we'll get, we'll get on it. Move through. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries four to zero, one absent. Good. All right, let's move to item 13. Rob? Thank you. Report. Thank you, Mr. President. Reporting in that we're busy. Uh, a lot of projects going on. And grade five repairs are doing very well. We're going grade four was did open yesterday. Very, uh, very aggressive bidding. And we're going out for Phase five on Monday, so we are trying to keep up with the TV that's being done. I think we're making a killing by avoiding plans and specs and just putting out the videos. And the contractors are on top of it. We're doing great, so we're very excited about that. And all the rest of the projects are coming along as well. Uh, you're, 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 how many do you have any? Well, is this the first, is this one half of the system being cleaned this year and then one half next year? Yeah. I mean, TV? Right. So here we are. Let's just say that, let's say that uh, maybe five phases and seven months, and each one's about 30. So there's the math. But you never know what might come in the future either. So it's 150 potential, 150 in, this, in one half of the system. Possibly. But what's good is we're, we're right on top of it. Yeah. And from a standpoint of getting to the work, they need to be repaired immediately. And we're doing that. So that's the best part. Well, I, can, I can feel our you know, backing the comments. <laughs> Great prices, too. You know, as we're doing the lines and as we're TV, CCTV, and all that, has the draft had any effect on what you guys are seeing down there? Do you think there's been less need to clean? Or, is there any correlation between the drought and 
A lot of questions. Very good. A questionnaire came out about that. And a lot of people think, yes, it's probably true that roots are a little more aggressive when there's less water. Mm -hmm. And less water means uh, less flushing effect in the sewer. So right. it does have a, a little effect. It's funny, if, I'll talk about this later, but I put in Cambria last week on um, a tour of the Cambria Community Services District. They were really showing us the Cambria, if you know, there's no for the pine trees all over the place. I think that more than a third of those trees are dead. Mm -hmm. And with that fire that was burning last week yeah. up towards First Castle, mm -hmm. if that had come a little, you know, another mm -hmm. 15, 20 miles, the city of Cambria would have gone up. Mm -hmm. So, I just made me think of that with the trees. Right. And the okay, uh, item 14 then, Ross? 14, we have two small conflict of interest reports. 2191 Mesa Drive will be the demolition of an uh, existing house and construction of a new house. At this point, it's only been retained to do the survey. Uh, 3011 Salon Road is demolition of a house and construction of a new house. And so far, it has prepared sewer and water plan, which will be checked by our alternate district engineer. Both sites have existing sewer all to do that. So there's not a lot to go wrong there. That's all. Any questions for Rob? Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Mark, anything for the treasurer's report? No items of seating. Do we have any money? <laughs> Don't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Counselor, your report. Actually, I have a few things to say since usually I have nothing to say. I saved them all up for a slow <laughs> meeting, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks for your indulgence. So I sent you all a memo about the Culver City case, which is a very helpful case under the Brown Act because it validates the exception of the Brown Act, and it talks about a situation that happened in Culver City, and the court said it was well within the exception. And the exception, as you know, is um, when you can respond to things that are not on the agenda. And it might bear just going over it briefly so we have it fresh in our mind. Uh, that you can briefly respond to statements made or questions posed by the public on your own initiative or in response to members of the public. You can ask for clarification, make brief announcements, or make a brief report on your own activities. Or you can, subject to the rules of your procedural body, uh, provide a reference to staff, meaning the you know, see the manager after the meeting, or other resources for information, like we've heard of our uh, CIP or request staff to report back at a subsequent meeting concerning any matter or direct that another matter be placed on a future agenda. So it, it went over those, uh, reaffirmed that those were proper um, discussions and uh, that was very helpful to have a case that said it was okay to do that. Uh, with that as a preface, I can uh, talk about a couple of matters that we have going right now. On our uh, writ for, uh, against MESA, we'll probably get that on file tomorrow or Monday, well within the 10-day period, and then we'll set it for a, the court will set it for a briefing schedule, so we'll have more information for you after that. We'll, we're well on schedule to get that on file. And uh, the president's going to, by the way, the, the president's going to be our petitioner in the matter because we have to have a taxpayer, so he's both a, a taxpayer, a resident, and president of this board, so he has the best standing of all to in the action. Um, it my heart, I just sort of had a little flutter in my heart to go, go. I hope it was a good flutter. <laughs> <in my> <laughs> <laughs> we have a, uh, as you know, we have a Public Records Act request uh, also mm -hmm. to MESA, and we've gotten two or, uh, I guess we've gotten three letters from them, or three responses, and the first was they needed 10 days to respond, then they invoked 14 days to respond further that they claimed they had under the statute. And then the last communication we had from them said they needed another month. And the law is really that you're supposed to provide a prompt response. And sometimes you're going to have an, an issue where you need further uh, time to analyze something and it might be appropriate, like it was with the emails, going through emails. That, that's maybe legitimate. So as you know, we've sent a follow-up letter saying 
that's fine for those matters, but for the matters that are readily ascertainable and common public documents, let's see your contracts, your resolutions, and those kinds of reports, and we'll be down there at your door Monday to get, pick them up. And if they say nobody's here or we have nothing for you, we're going to be back to ask the board for more authority to uh, pursue that in the spirit of court. Because okay. if they do not uh, accommodate, then I'm going to suspect they're still normal. Well, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I was understating something there. Yeah. So that's it under those matters. I'll have a little more to say um, under uh, litigation. Yep. So what, what what I'm going to look at two people for an agenda for the administrative cost. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually have a, a real agenda as a matter. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, a request for the money for the administrative record. We. Um, need to get pay the administrative record so we can get that record to that's what the lawsuit is based on is the record and director his testimony and in the record. And we uh, are asking for your authority to do that. Just out of I think we just want to keep you in the loop. And, and pretty obviously you want us to get the administrative record since you spent more than that amount of money pursuing this with uh, I would move the action. It's interesting. I, I, I found it really interesting that the most expensive person did the most work, had the most hours. She, we talked about that. that person told, told oh, my, yeah. Is she an attorney? No. She's not. Just an administrator. She's an employee of the minimum wage. Yeah. 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 What, what if you think keep dragging their feet on that request? Uh, Mason? You get a writ of mandate, and um, if you prevail, you get your attorney's fees. If they prevail, they don't get their attorney's fees. So that's what you'll be coming back to? Please. That's what I'll be asking you for if Monday does not go well. We're off track here. We have a motion and a, a second on the payment of the administrative cost for the Santa Ana Water Regional Quality Board. We have a discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0 with one absent. And I, Mr. President, I assume that means I can get the hard copy to it for a little extra money. I appreciate it. It's a lot easier to work with. This is what we need. This was our testimony. Yeah. The court reporters, where she took down all the documents, both sides put in the record, the whole thing. <laughs> and if we prevail, we get that money back. And if we don't, we don't. Okay, let's go to uh, local meetings over there. Which County Sand District, uh, we had a meeting last night, and we did approve uh, the settlement with uh, uh, our, our uh, first meet sanitary district. Um, so that's great down result. the road. A great result. I guess it's as good as we're going to get. Uh, yeah. We also, uh, uh, in closed session, approved uh, 500. No, no, it, it, it was... Oh, you reported out? Yeah, we reported Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a good attorney. Yeah. I'm looking out for the other guy's client. No, uh, <laughs> we're in agreement with him, and, uh, but uh, it was a house in, I think, Orange, and and they got flooded. I mean, when I say flooded, <laughs> it was like on Thanksgiving, too, or something, and it just blew it all up. Wait for it. Brown flood? Sure. Sludge mm. right through the house. Uh, Five hundred and twenty-eight thousand, I think, is what what, what you settled with them for. But it just, uh, but it's a, I mean, it's like a two million dollar house. Mm. What's an SSO or a backup? Uh, well, I think it was a backup, and we we did some investigation to see if they had a, a, an anti siphon uh, or a you know, back backflow, back 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 uh, device requirement. But it's county, or it's county, or it's out there, it, it never did get uh, documented. Mm -hmm. So we, we, they had us. You know, we, we couldn't uh, uh, use that to get out of it. Anyway, so that that's not happened. covered by insurance. Is it? No, it isn't. That's a good, that's Unless you get that option, I mean, there's an option to buy. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Insurance yeah. won't cover back at the uh, city. <laughs> what else, Bob? I think that's about it. Well, one of my employees. 
30 years. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a lot of routine things there for, you know, financial, essentially financial reports on the bonds and things. Most of the money was on the contract. Yeah. Well, that's about it. Okay. Anything from the surface? Uh, we didn't need something. Um, is that, I'll just report that uh, <laughs> major item of discussion at our last meeting, other than trying to get our first vice president to get us a program that she has a little difficulty doing, but that's okay. We'll have a new first vice president next time. Um, elections. Uh, we election the ballots will be out sometime in late September, mid to late September. We'll be receiving it. Uh, it's a contested election for the president, first and second, vice, and third vice presidents. Um, secretary and treasurer are running out of foes. So you'll be seeing letters like you saw here from the viable candidates. And I had a question on those letters, because obviously I'm running for president of this back again. My letter's going to go out next week. Can we use the district's letterhead to campaign like that? Yeah, it's because it's all the district you have. You're representing the district. Okay, so, so it's, not, it's not like a general election. It, it is, okay, so we'll yeah. both of us can prepare our statements and give them to you guys. For, sure. Okay. Well, I'll uh, have it to you early next week. Um, one of the big things we always talk about at is doc is our membership in OCOG. And of course, Phil Anthony is very adamant that we need to be, and you know, the majority, our budget at is doc of the year is about. $8,000, roughly $10,000, and $5,000 that goes to OCOC. And mm -hmm. we have a couple of people on the board and a couple of members that come all the time that just absolutely do not want to be part of OCOC if they have to waste some money. Um, you know, I'm on the OCOC board. Yeah, I know you are. And I'm, I'm supposed to be one of the liaisons from this doc, and I forgot that there was a meeting this morning, <laughs> so I didn't go. Um, but I will report for him. It, it just, Um, Can I say one thing on that? Sure. Uh, I went to the Oak meeting today. And, uh, the county just pulled out of Oak Park. Cool. Yeah. Did they really? Yeah. Really? Seventy-nine thousand bucks. Oh my God. Yeah. That's going to signal the end of Oak I think. Wow. Or that's going to put a, a damper on the activity. It of isn't Oak. doing as much good. Well, wow. the, the big deal is the, the Center for Demographic Research that OCOG uses yeah. out of Cal State Fullerton. Yeah. 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 And wow. Oh my God. That's big news. So, what there. happens to his stock as far as the check? What we paid out? Well, I just, well everybody else is, is, is in there and we're still operating. We just, we just paid our dues yesterday. I know. Oh. So. Wow. They just have a new manager, too. That's right. She's been mm -hmm. around a while, but dramatic, dramatic. Yeah, yeah. They, they only have one staff, and she's part-time. Yeah. She'll be more part-time. Mm. Um, 120,000 part-time. They can get it up. Yeah, really. Mm. CSDA, are they using the report? Yeah, probably. We just finished having a legislation committee meeting with the job group, and uh, it, everything went well, except that uh, the Little Hoover Commission meets today. We mm -hmm. haven't heard anything. Right? No, because they, they changed rooms, so they couldn't, yeah. they couldn't put it on video. They put they it were, on the They were meeting this afternoon. Yeah, but they Maybe. changed, they were going to live yeah. stream it. Then they then they delayed live stream for some reason. <coughs> then they changed rooms, and then they couldn't video take that. So. So, but we'll, we're actually very well represented because uh, Kyle and Neil both have um, given over everything to them and they're going to be talking on this topic. Um, the big thing is consolidation. Make the answer. Did they go? Yeah, they went. Hmm. Okay. They have a bigger budget for travel than me. Yeah. So anyway, um, we're going to see, you know, what happens out of that. It's just a meeting where they're trying to decide they've already chosen their witnesses, but they're only allowing to talk. And fortunately, CSU has two, for sure. And uh, we'll see what happens out of that. I have loads of material on uh, the little 
about no rate increases, which you guys already know on the, on the premiums. Um, but then the 
following week, when, once a year, the STR May Board visits either a, a member's district or, in this case, we actually went to four or five districts. Uh, we met in Cambria and visited the Cambria, I'm sorry, the San Simeon Community Services District, the Cambria Community Services District, the Cambria Healthcare District, oh, and then we went to the Templeton Community Services District. And it's really cool to see, I mean, so the uh, San Simeon Community Services District provides water, parks, and sewer treatment wow. to 1,700 people. And we went to their well, one of their wells, and then we went down to their treatment, I was telling you, their treatment park. Their well sits on Hearst property. So we got permission to go into the Hearst ranch a little bit and you can see where the, and there were all these horses and, and this is no joke, as we're going in, there were about 50 zebra that came walking yeah. down the road, right right where yeah. we were, you know, all from the old Hearst yeah. Zoo. Oh, yeah. um, their, their sewer treatment, if you ever if you ever go up to Hearst Castle, the sewer treatment is just right down on the bluff up to the ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's right there. And they have these nice condos, right? <laughs> and, and I don't know who was there first, the sewer treatment plant or the yeah. condos, but... Um, I bet those condos sell really cheap. So. And the, uh, in Cambria, the Community Services District, we went to see the famous Cambria desalination facility. And I got to tell you, if they can do it, anybody can do it. Um, their, their desalination facility is made with storage containers. They have, you know, storage containers that are on back of trucks. Yeah. When they were getting this thing started, there was a company, there was a cancellation of an order from some company up north, in the northern part of the, the country. And so, um, Cambria was able to go in and buy this stuff really cheap, or, you know, relatively cheap. But their whole operation is through these storage containers. They have reverse osmosis units in these storage, and they open the doors, you know, and then they had a couple of tanks. Well, they're not desalinating ocean water. Right but they are desalinating brackish water. It's the water that, you yeah, know, yeah. comes in and... The, the, the wells uh, lower the groundwater and the ocean came in. Yeah. Mm. And they were showing this. It, it was, it was kind of cool to see. The water, when it comes, when it gets treated, by the time it gets to where it's pumped to the public, it has to take 60 days to run from the desal to the distribution mm. point. 60 days. How many did it take for a day? I don't remember. Honestly. And it, 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 it was, they have to put dye in there and they track the dye. Yeah. For it. And the guy was saying, yeah, the last one we did came out at 57 days. They couldn't use it. Oh. They had to put it back in the ground wall. So, um, the, the community, they had, and then the, the, they have a healthcare district in Cambria. There's no hospital anywhere near Cambria. They either go to Templeton or to San Luis Obispo to get a hospital. Mm -hmm. And they have all these ambulances, and it was a really good deal. And then in Templeton the next day, which is across the hill, um, the big thing in Templeton was their skateboard park, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> With, and uh, it was a really good tour. And like I said, if you're ever going to Hearst Castle, go look at the, mm -hmm. I'm sure you'd be fascinated with the sewer treatment mm -hmm. facility. Was well, I can tell you about that. You probably helped build it. Mm -hmm. uh, the water, the water system uh, lowered the groundwater like, and the big flat takes the floor, and the seawater comes in, and so they were getting seawater. They were getting salt in their drinking water, so they they changed out all the plumbing fixtures and implemented um, water conservation in a big way, mm -hmm. and that stopped the encroachment of the seawater. Because the, the water usage went down to the next Okay, if you want to buy property in Cambria, now's the time to do it. They're, they're feeling the price. <laughs> that just blew me away. Yeah. That's a beautiful yeah. area over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cambria's yeah. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. But it's as dry as a bone. And on Labor Day, they have something called Pine Dorado, which 
was Labor Day, the line put on by the line. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay other meetings. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and give a report on the ad hoc, just some activities from the ad hoc committee. Um, we've, I missed a couple of meetings, and I know Bob missed a couple of meetings, but we've been at the last several meetings with the ad hoc committee and the effort with the consultant in Mesa Water. Um, I think it just got correct me if I'm right. We're making really good progress. Mm -hmm. um, we're scheduled with a newsletter. Special edition newsletter. Special edition newsletter will be coming out. Um, and then, of course, we've said go with the town hall meeting in October, mm -hmm. October 19th. Mm -hmm. um, Telling me there's a candidate's forum a week earlier. Someone, mm -hmm. I, I had the dates wrong, but um, other than that, I mean, we, we seem to be getting a lot of good interaction with the consultants and with Alan and Scott and, and uh, um, Adam Davis and Mark. And Mark. Um, and Mary. Yeah, we did have an inquiry from a former director as to whether the two of them were related. Okay. <laughs> anything else to add on the ad hoc staff? No, I think very important effort uh, and it's a learning experience. Uh, but, um, I, you know, I think the team we have you know, is doing very well. And, and kind of to tie with that, uh, I think Scott had mentioned to all of you that um, one of the consultants from Mesa Water had nominated us, CMSD, to receive a Radish Award oh, yeah. with the Orange County Taxpayers Association, and um, one of our consultants' boss was able to uh, stop that from happening. And it, it again, to tie with that, Scott and Bob and I met with Carolyn Kabechi yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon mm -hmm. to discuss things, and uh, she had some interesting comments for us. And um, just kind of to recap her comments. One of the things she said that I thought was the best comment of the day was, if Mesa Water's doing something, they must be up to something. She knows. She, she said that. Well, she, well, she doesn't know, but she thinks something knows. Yeah, she says, if her first question to us was, what are they going to get out of this consolidation? I mean, she wanted to know what they were trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. and, and we give her our opinions, of course. And, um, she did ask us a couple of questions from the fact that she was involved in the Earth Can Tech Trade. And one was to talk about she asked about the building and Scott did a really nice job of explaining she was under the impression we still own this building so that we were really old and had two yeah. buildings. Scott did a great job of explaining to her all that process mm -hmm. and um, the other thing she wanted to know about, I'll be just quite up front, uh, she wanted to know about the trash contract. Why mm -hmm. we haven't got out to bed and uh, her opinion is it doesn't look very good for us to continue to have that trash contract not out to bed. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we talked to her a little bit about that. Uh, but the bottom line with them and the merger is that they are going to take a hands-off position. It is kind of a neutral position. They're going to back off and just let things... They'll be watching it, but they're They'll not. be watching it, but they're not going to be actively involved. Well, Carolyn, Carolyn is not a very astute politician. Yeah. 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 It was a, I thought it was a good meeting. Other meetings, are we? Yeah, one other meeting I went to uh, the other night was uh, the reception for the new CEO of the Chamber of Commerce mm. at the Red Company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bernie. 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 The woman. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very nice. From San Diego. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, it was worthwhile. I mean, everybody turned out to me. Uh, Is there anything said about the merger? Uh, very little. So we couldn't talk to them. And um, it's very positive. So well, obviously, I think most of us are disappointed with, with and you saw the response letter we sent to their legislative person. She came, she came on board. She and Tom Johnson came on board after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was um, thank you, Scott, for the note today about what happened at the Candidates Forum last night, at the Mesa Verde Candidates Forum, Mesa Verde Homeowners Association Forum. Uh, the, the four candidates that actually showed up.
showed up for the event were John Stevens, Sandy Guinness, uh, Humphrey. Jay Humphrey, and Al Maloney. Uh, Lee Ramos, Al Mansour, and Mr. Menzinger had other things to do last night. Mm -hmm. um, so they didn't show up. And a question was asked about what their opinion was on the merger, and all four of them said that it was a political stunt. Mm -hmm. Not to paraphrase <laughs> the uh -huh. Mr. Mosier, but uh, that they all basically said this is a power grab and a political mm -hmm. thing. So, thanks. And, and that came from Jeff West. Mm -hmm. I went to the to the fire. They were all out there. Yeah. And uh, it was very good. Big audience, you know, I mean, it was packed. Yeah. People really cared what was going on. It's interesting, too. Uh, a lot of the mayor pro tem apparently has a little meeting with a, a person. I mean, called Stand Up with Jim. And he meets with someone at City Hall. So he's doing that next month. His, his guest at the Stand Up with Jim is Alamansour. You know, people have questioned why he, one of his guests is a candidate. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, any other meetings that any of us attended? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move to old business, which we have none, new business none. Any director comments? I have just one. We have a liaison meeting scheduled for next month, correct? Yes. Uh, I can tell you the date. I believe it's September 10th. Yeah. Would it be okay. wise Awkward. to postpone that? <laughs> you want to go to that? And you want to do that? Yeah. Who's hosting it? I, I believe it's at the city. It's the 16th, I'm sorry. Yeah, September 16th. September 16th. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. What, what is the canceled one that makes this? Or is it it's the the no, I don't know the part they move right along. Yeah. Even if it's canceled, yeah. so it will be at the city. Um, I know Vice President Perry won't attend because he won't go to the city. He's told me he does not like to attend City Hall. I will be in at a Kajab at a Joint Powers Authority conference that week. Mm -hmm. So, oh, if you three would Se like to represent us. September what? 16th. 16th. At 8 a.m. 8 o'clock. Can, can you confirm? You, you have that confirmed that it is at City Hall? Correct. Now, I'm assuming, or there is a chance that okay. as the city of Mesa canceled last time, they may cancel this one as well. So, but. Mm -hmm. As Councilor said, it could be an awkward meeting. You'll need it. They like me. Okay. Mr. President. Sir. Just I'm not going to be here. Uh -huh. You know, I was going to, we were going to go to Iowa City football, and that may be the only reason why it's canceled. Okay. You, you'll cancel go to the football? We cancel going to play, We play Utah. Sounds like good already. <laughs> <laughs> no, you mean Scott? No, it's a good attempt. Rob, I'm sorry, go ahead. A staff comment. I'm not sure what the policy is or anything, but this is Utah's home game for us. Jim Warner was on the board for 16 years. Might be appropriate to a moment of silence to during a meeting on his behalf. Yeah. I, I, something I, for uh, him and perhaps his family. I, I plan on adjourning the meeting on his behalf, so thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Uh, any other director comments? Okay. Then I'm going to adjourn us to a closed session. Or I'm not sure we need a closed session, Mr. President. Okay. Unless any director wants one, I can give a brief report, and then you can determine if you want one. We don't have much to report on the um, Regional Water Quality Control Board. Um, we we've authorized the record. We'll. Um, I think they'll be filing their answer pretty soon, and we'll have a lot more to say next time. It'll start heating up next uh, next month. But do you, do you want to mention the proposed amendments to the enforcement policy? Yeah, I, uh, uh, if you can carry the discussion, I, I only uh, briefly looked at it, but that that was pretty interesting. To <coughs> well, um, and, and I mentioned your weekly update. We, Rob sent this to us. Thank you, Rob. And it was actually forwarded to to Rob from the county, right? And there, there. So apparently, our arguments in the public hearing. Um, back in July 24th, as, 
had uh, took notice to state officials because they are amending their enforcement policies. Um, and a couple of them, they are now defining what a high volume spill is. They said between 100,000 to 2 million gallons. Um, they're also saying that, you know, one of our big arguments is, is, is that, hey, look, we, we got the test results, the water quality test results, and there was no harmful effect to the water. Well, now the policy is going to say it does, you don't have to have um, actual proof that uh, wastewater can cause harmful effects. Everyone knows wastewater is dangerous. And if the water waste is going to be harmful. So they're tightening up that enforcement policy because of a lot of our arguments. Doesn't that give us some leverage? I mean, if, 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 if they're changing it based on what we did, I mean, and it's, that would seem like you would give would us a little leverage or something. Yeah, uh, it might, but uh, <coughs> I can think of a lot of evidentiary rules why we couldn't bring it in, but it would sure be nice to let that come in somehow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was certainly a, a good... Alan, Good thing to hear. Yeah, yeah, Alan once said that our fixes on the station are also not allowed to be used by them to say, after we fix all these things, after the spill, to say, see, you knew it was bad, you fixed all these things. Yeah. So that's the rule he's referring to. Yeah. Called subsequent remedial measures. Wow. But uh, anyway, we'll... Well, we have some impact. Yeah. Once, again, yeah, that's show, the, yeah, that's once again, it just shows that this special district is in the forefront yeah. in leading things in the state of California. Absolutely. I mean, we are right out in front of everybody. And I think some of the board's policy, or part of the board's policy, was to not let the regional board get away with not following their own rules. Yeah. And now we could maybe have rolled over real easily and just accepted it and walked away. Mm -hmm. and, 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 everyone does. Does. and everyone does. And everyone does. does roll over on them. Yeah, that was a good. I think we were the first agency to stand up against them. Yeah. You got a bunch of pig headed directors. Good, good job. It was good. Yeah, that was good. Um, if there's no need. To and the other one is, excuse oh, me, the okay. other one is the uh, uh, Caltrans, and we did get service on the state. We're really uh, taking issue with the state, I guess, but this is a small matter. This is our matter with our contractor incorrectly uh, put the pole through our sewer main line and we do have service on them now so we'll get an answer for that so next next month we should have two substantive reports on both cases uh, on the status of both cases and that'll give us time to get through the uh, mesa issues some of some of them and so what we're trying to do is recover our costs yes this is a small case yeah. but yeah we're just and and it's as we, i think we've reported to you it's a little complicated in terms of the city handed off handed over ownership of uh, the state to the city. Uh, they passed the baton at the same time this was being done. And so we, we got a few things to sort out. So we're basically saying somebody did it. Which way you guys did it? Alan, did we ever hear back from Discovery for the state? No, we have not yet. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to follow up on that. Okay. All right, if there's no further business, then I'm going to... Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. We did hear back. It was a very skimpy <laughs> response, though. So, oh, really? yeah. It was basically they, they provided us a document saying the, the property transferred, and that, that's all they gave us. So we'll, now that we're in the litigation process, we have more formalized methods of getting answers, interrogatories and things. But we'll try and keep it in mind that this is a small case, not a big case. So we're, we're up to big bill on this one. All right, then if, if there is nothing else, I'm going to adjourn us. But before we adjourn, just a a moment of silence and remembrance of Jim Warner. Um, we all have we all have recollections. We all have personal memories of Jim Warner, except, except for the newer staff. Um, Jim was really a good guy. I mean, I don't know. He, he was a mentor to me in a lot of ways, and I know he was to Jim and to Arlene. And um, he tried to be to me. He tried to be to Bob, but <laughs> <laughs> I used the word pig-headed a minute ago, and, and I'm sure Bob. Being from Iowa, we can relate that. But, but uh, Jim Warner uh, brought a lot of us into the fold with a lot of things, and uh, he will be missed. Uh, I know Beverly's devastated his wife, but if we could just take a, a quick moment of silence in memory of former board member, former board president, Jim Warner. Thank you all very much. A, a real quick story, please. please. Hey, no, Rob, no. you worked with him mm -hmm. more than anybody. He was, gr he was great. Uh, besides having the, 
the record of quickest meeting of 18 minutes. By a full I was I was shooting for a record tonight, but it didn't work. A full board meeting of 18 minutes. He would um, admonish the directors for getting into too much discussion, saying that they were supposed to have figured all this out before the meeting, and that you just come in and vote and go home. So that was that was the way he ran with the gavel. Well, you know, you know when I was back when I was on the board before, and we met in that little conference room behind the council chambers. And you're right. If you if if you had more to talk about, he'd look mm -hmm. at you and say you should have been ready with that. You should have had that already done. Okay. <laughs> we can do a press release on this and get some recognition. For would you? Would you? Yeah. That'd, that'd be a good. really that'd be outstanding. Yeah, sure. You might, really you might also consider doing a resolution honoring. Okay. Sure. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you all for that. Okay, with that, I will adjourn us to our September 22nd meeting. Happy Labor Day to everybody, and uh, we're adjourned. Scott, somewhere there's a proclamation that was written for him that would have all of his stuff. Yeah.